start. A warm welcome to everybody from uh, yeah, my Berlin home office. Uh, I hope you're all safe and healthy during these still or maybe uh, rather again very strange and difficult times. So thank you for joining this uh, web event. My name is Marie Nitan. I'm the media policy officer at Bitcom, which is the German Digital Trade Association. And I will be co-moderating this event together with uh, Louis Cuvier, who is managing director of Tech in France, the French Digital Association, whom we are hosting this event with. First, Hello, some quick housekeeping rules for the Zoom call. Um, although you probably heard this 10 times already during the last seven months and are all familiar with it by now, but just to be sure. Uh, so we are not in a regular Zoom call, we all know, but in a webinar mode. So only the speakers uh, can turn on their cameras and microphone by themselves. But this does not mean that we want the audience to remain passive. Uh, the contrary is the case. So if you would like to ask a question or contribute to the discussion, you're very welcome to do so. Uh, we reserved some time for your intervention at the end of the debate. And there are two options for this. So you can either type your question in the chat here um, in the Zoom call, preferably already during the debate, uh, whenever a question comes to your mind, uh, maybe, so I can see how much time we will need, uh, how much questions there are. And um, I will then read it to the speakers in the time we reserve for that. Um, alternatively, when we are in the Q&A session, you can also put up your virtual hand in the Zoom call. Um, if you would like to pose the question yourself and don't just want me to read it to you so I can give um, speaking rights to you. So I hope it's clear how that works uh, so we can get into the very interesting topic for the next hour. Both in France and in Germany, recent legislation on hate speech and other harmful content has ignited fierce debates around freedom of speech, appropriate solutions and even the constitutionality of proposed legislation on this topic, as well as their compatibility with EU law. The Network Enforcement Act on the one hand in Germany, the NetCG, and the AVIA law in France. So I would like to first give you a very short background on the NetCG for those who are not very familiar with it, and then we will give a quick background on the AVIA law so we're all on the same page. So the NetCG was introduced in fall 2017, um, and the law requires social networks like, for example, Facebook, Google, or Twitter, under German law, um, to offer a channel to their users to report content uh, that is illegal and also to immediately check this content flagged. Obviously, illegal content must be removed within 24 hours, illegal content within one week. Failure to comply with the obligations is punishable by fines. There was strong criticism of the law by a broad mass of industry associations, civil law organizations, also lawyers, who considered the law might be contrary to European law or also unconstitutional. The main points of criticism were the mere deletion of content, which leads to continued lack of prosecution, the combination of short deletion deadlines and high fines, which could lead to overblocking and thus pose a threat to freedom of expression, as well as the shift of legal assessment of content under German law to internationally operating private companies. In December 2019, a reform of the NetsDG was proposed in the context of a draft bill to combat right-wing extremism and hate crime in Germany. And it introduced a new requirement to the NetsDG, according to which content removed, which is according to the social network um, illegal, must be proactively reported to the German Federal Criminal Police Office, the Bundeskriminalamt, alongside with the IP address and port number of the user who uploaded the content. The uh, Bundeskriminalamt then checks the content and if it could indeed be illegal, forwards it to the public prosecutors. There was again quite some criticism on this reform, among others also from the European Commission, who said that it might hinder the freedom to provide information society services or breach data protection obligations. The law has already been passed um, by the German legislators this summer, but it could not enter into force yet because the federal president has not yet signed the law, as there are some concerns about the constitutionality. So much for the state of play in Germany, and now to a quick background on the AVIA law by Louis. Thanks, Mary. <clears throat> NetsDG, in fact, inspired many governments in their willingness to moderate contents on the web. The Avialo in France is one of them among countries like Russia, Turkey, Austria, or Brazil. The law, which was promulgated in June, creates an online hate observatory responsible for monitoring and analyzing the evolution of hate content in conjunction with the operators, associations, and researchers concerned. The observatory is placed under the supervision of the Audiovisual Council. The bill passed previously by Parliament compelled online platforms and search engines to remove within 24 hours after notification clearly illegal content such as 
incitement to hatred, racist, and anti-religious insults. For terrorist or child pornographic content, the withdrawal period was reduced to one hour. But in its decision of June 18, the Constitutional Council struck down many of these provisions, censored, as we used to say in France. For the Council, the legislator infringes on freedom of expression in a way which is neither adapted nor proportionate to the aim pursued. For content reported by people, the concern underlies the risk that operators will be encouraged to remove all contested content, including, including those that are lawful. Among those provisions struck down were the provisions of the text which organized the implementation of the obligation to remove content. The development of this law had raised many debates similar to those in Germany, of course. The recent very sad news, the sad events in France had relaunched debates, but also that more general question to know whether the platforms or courts of justice of the countries are responsible for the feeling of impunity on the internet. These are the questions that we will try to address today. Moreover, the problems being the same in both countries, and in fact in the EU, and being observed as potential examples from the rest of the world, we think they should not be dealt with separately, but together. Because also in parallel to those national debates, the European institutions are preparing a Digital Services Act, which is aiming to set a new regulatory framework for all online services, including provisions on how to deal with illegal content. Marie. Thanks, Leuk. So to bridge the gap between these two national debates, which are in fact quite um, similar, but also differ in, in some points, uh, we are hosting this web event today in cooperation between Tech in France and Bitcom to bring together French and German experts on this. So I would now like to introduce you to our great panel of speakers we have with us today. We first have Ms. Avia, Letitia Avia, which is a member of the French Assemblée Nationale for La République en Marche, and she is the rapporteur of the French Avia Law. Welcome, Ms. Avia. Hi, everyone. Also with us is uh, Dr. Jens Zimmermann. He's a member of the German Parliament, of the German Bundestag for the Social Democrats, and he's the spokesperson for digital policy. So he is also very familiar with NetsDG and related topics. Welcome. Hello. We actually also gained uh, basically another member, we, which we were just uh, informed uh, quickly before this, because Ms. Avia will have to leave our event uh, after 30 minutes, unfortunately, but she has parliamentary duties at short notice, which uh, can come up. So uh, we also have with us Sandro Gosi, uh, which who is a member of the European Parliament for the Renew Europe and also former Italian Secretary of State for European Affairs. And since we especially also want to uh, talk about um, the European level on the second half of this event, it's uh, great that you can also be with us today, Mr. Gozi. Welcome. Also with us is Jean Sebastian Marie. He's founding partner of Momentum Avocat, which is an independent business law firm assisting its clients in information and con communication technologies law with a European and international perspective. Welcome. And last but not least, we have with us Amelie Piahed, who is a media law expert at the Leibniz Institute for Media Research in Hamburg, which examines media change and the related structural shifts in public communication. And with her background, not only in media, but also actually in German as well as French law, uh, I would say she's a perfect fit also for this panel. Welcome. So thank you all for taking the time to join our discussion this afternoon. Uh, what we will do during this event is just pose several questions uh, to all of you, and then you can just react to those questions or also the parts of the questions you would like to react to. So we won't pick people basically and force them to speak on certain topics, but we will just throw in some questions and then would, if you would like to react to them, just um, go for it. Yes, and um, we would like to structure our debate on three areas of topics. Uh, first, we start with a short assessment of both the French and German law, then uh, talk about national vice versa European approaches to hate speech, and finally move to the upcoming Digital Services Act. And afterwards, of course, we'll have time for questions for the audience. 
So let's start for the first questions. In two years uh, of application in Germany and more than four months in France, do you consider that national hate speech legislation has already proven effects on the moderation of illegal contents online? We have seen issues with the constitutionality of the approaches to hate speech as well as their compatibility with the EU law. This area of regulation seems particularly difficult indeed, raising a lot of conflicts and questions. Thus, according to you, are there some learnings from those latest developments? How could those issues be prevented in the future? Who want to talk? Uh, maybe maybe I could start. Um, uh, first, I, I'm sorry I have to tell you that I have to leave in 15 minutes because I am currently responsible for the debate for the um, sanitary crisis and uh, I have to, to make sure the debate <laughs> goes well. But I'm very happy that San Rogozi is there and you have to know that we, we work together a lot and everything he will say, I will say exactly the same thing. We are both speaking the same voice here. So... Um, does national um, national law uh, has effects? I cannot tell you about the French law because the French law is not in effect about regulation. But what I what I can tell you is that I could see a difference with um, uh, in the way the um, the platforms were dealing with content during the time I was working on uh, on uh, on this law about uh, cyber hate. I, I could see that has the platform where I can say under a certain, a certain kind of pressure, has they knew that um, they had to involve, to, to evaluate. You, you could see that uh, something was changing, that they were taking their own responsibility to make sure they, are, they were online with what the society was requiring. Um, now I can see that these effects are not, uh, these efforts are not exactly uh, on the same um, page that uh, it was uh, in uh, the previous months, because when there is no um, legislation, there is no effort. That's, uh, that's, that's the way I could see things um, as, a, as a lawmaker. Uh, I think the German law was a great initiative. I know we, we are still working on a national law in France. I know uh, in Belgium, they are still working also. So I can see that a lot of country are trying to find a way to remind that um, the platforms are not above the law. They don't have their own kind of laws which should apply everywhere. We have national laws, that's something about public order that we have to protect. And it's very important that the national laws applies um, online and offline. So that's what I can tell you about, about this, but I, but I also think, and it's very important that we should all together work on a um, European initiative that's why I have been uh, working a lot um, with uh, the European Commission about the Digital Services Act. And the idea is that we will have a common framework uh, about regulation. And then uh, maybe uh, all the countries that would like to have their own legislation could try to have a, a law that will fit within the framework of the DSA. If, if I can say a word, um, because obviously um, I think that our German colleagues are, will have more to say because, uh, as uh, Miss Avia reminded very well, uh, our law in France has been struck down, so it's not into effect. But there is actually one provision at least that came into effect. That's the one that Loic reminded, and that is creating the observatory uh, on uh, for online uh, online um, online online speech and online hate okay and actually that's in my view an interesting development because and i guess we'll be talking quite a lot of this during this uh, this 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 webinar uh, the definition of uh, the content uh, that need and that required uh, to be um, filtered or taken down is, is really a crucial issue because the more um, um, complex it is to uh, figure out and to qualify a content, the more likely it is uh, that uh, platforms are likely to take unproportionate measures 
So this development uh, in France is, is already a progress because I could see one week or two weeks ago that the, the, the observatory uh, just created this different working group. And one of his working group, if I understood correctly, is dedicated to work uh, to work uh, to, to to work on on such a definition. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe on the on the German perspective and uh, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's great that you uh, that we come together to to have that exchange. And um, um, when we when we first uh, brought the net DG into the Bundestag, uh, we understand that it is really. Um, a delicate measure because uh, we are talking about freedom of expression and, and this is also heavily protected um, by the German constitution. Nevertheless, um, and this is also our position that um, freedom of expression is, is a crucial value, but the personal dignity of others as well. And um, in, in, in Germany, our constitution has a different concept um, as for example, the, the US constitution where freedom of expression is, is much more uh, absolute. Um, what we learned over, over the past years is that um, first of all, the networks, they increased their staff dramatically. So uh, one of the key moments uh, on the path to that law was when we had a hearing in our committee on digitization in the Bundestag, when we were asking uh, Facebook, how many people do you employ in Germany for moderating content? And the representative of Facebook told us as MPs, I can't reveal that number, it's a company secret. And that was really, if you wanna make members of parliament uh, angry, you act like this. And this was the, the point where we said, okay, come on, um, if you're playing this game, we, we will play our game. And um, so we came up with that uh, legislation. And of course we um, had a debate about overblocking. So the removal of content, which is uh, completely legal, but we have a transparency report um, every other month and, um, and quarter, and we're seeing that overblocking isn't a big issue. Um, maybe I mean, you will find definitely others in Germany who will say it is a huge problem, but uh, quantitatively speaking, it isn't. Um, and so as a success, we definitely see that there are much more moderators now working the complaints of, of the citizens. Um, and, and I think that's, that's a good thing. On the other hand, we also, if we're talking about content which is removed, um, we need to talk about community standards. And um, this is a, is a much more delicate aspect because what the German Net DG law says is networks need to block content which is illegal by the already existing German laws. So we didn't create new laws. We didn't create any new uh, circumstances where content needs additionally removed. We simply wrote into that law networks, you need to comply with actual German law. And I think this, this one is crucial. There is no, there are no new cases where content needs to be removed. Um, but again, um, talking about community standards, um, that's much more difficult because community standards are usually, in, um, um, they, they show US cultural aspect. So for example, you know all the, the, the questions about uh, 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 people who are showing too much, uh, which are too naked, uh, they will be remo removed in no time. Um, this, in, in many cases, it's, it, it's, it, it's useful, but um, it's, um, it's not according uh, in many cases to, to, to actual German law. So, very interesting, and as uh, Marinitan already explained, we're still working on that legislation because uh, we, for sure, we know it's not perfect because we're in, in new territory here. 
Um, but we think doing nothing isn't an option. Can I say another word? Of course. Um, I, I wanted to say that the German law was really an example for us and we wanted to, to really try to make the same work as they did. And we, we found that there was this uh, issue about uh, over blocking content, uh, over withdrawal. And that's why uh, in the, the law I wrote, I tried to find some uh, solutions so, then, so that um, the platforms will also have fines if there is a behavior of uh, censorship of over blocking. Um, that's something that was written in the law. I don't know if it wasn't clear, it, maybe it wasn't clear enough because um, it wasn't exactly at the same place. It was in the article one, it was later in the, in the law. Uh, I, I think um, people uh, and also the Constitutional Council was so focused on the withdrawal that um, it was difficult to show the balance of, of the text and, this, um, and, and these elements. So that's, that's things we can uh, we can also uh, work on. That um, what, what what was say that was very very important is that we're not creating new laws that will apply only on platforms. We're making sure that our national laws apply also uh, within uh, the platforms. I think it's it's really surprising to see that um, a platform like Facebook will tell us that they can take down content without any notification in 80% of the cases. Um, and we don't know what they take down. We don't know if it's illegal. We don't know if it's just because it's people naked. We don't know it's because something that was uh, contrary of our standards of community. And when we ask them to do the same thing, the same work within 24 hours uh, uh, about illegal content, that will be an issue. I think here there is something that that, that is not really uh, fair in the way they, they deal with uh, the content. And that's why um, all the countries has to be a very, very uh, determined on uh, the work on the hate speech. Uh, overblocking is, is, as you said, it's just crucial because in, in, in the French instance, we could see it is a crucial issue because at the end of the day, uh, I, I, I think we can tell that the main reason why the, the French bill was struck down by the French Constitutional Court, it's because they analyzed the, the provision as creating a very high risk uh, to lead to overblocking. And I'd be very interested to, to hear our uh, German uh, friends on, on this because I, I don't know, uh, as, as you know, the, the, the Nets DG bill, but I think I identify a difference between uh, the French draft bill, okay, and your German bill. That is, if I understood correctly, the capacity uh, under German law uh, for the intermediaries to refer a case uh, to, to say uh, shortly, a case where we are in a gray area and where the qualification of the content would be too complex and uh, I, I don't know if, so, so please let me know if I understood correctly, but what is sure is that in my view, that would have made a, a difference in France if such a mechanism would have been uh, available and, and, uh, and stipulated. But just- do, do, do you mind if I maybe give you the, the answer because then I have to, to leave? Um, we had this discussion with the state council do we talk about the gray area? And um, because of the constitutional decisions we had in the past, it was say that in France, we cannot ask the platform to do anything about the gray area. So that's why we decided to work on this gray area within the, um, uh, the observatory of uh, hate, of, uh, online hate. Uh, we decided that we'll try to make the platform work together and to make some incentive, but within the law, we couldn't have any incentive, any regulation about anything that would not be obviously illegal. That's a problem we had and that's why we had to stay within this, uh, this definition. Mm -hmm. I'm very sorry I have to, to leave you, but my colleagues are sending me messages and we are starting again the, the debate. So um, very sorry, but um, thank you for this invitation. That's fine. Thank you so much for joining us, yeah. even for the short thank time. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you. And um, I think, Ms. Held, you wanted to say something uh, before, so maybe you can now. 
Yeah, I don't, I mean, we can also move to on to another question, but um, since uh, we've been talking a lot about the, the way in which uh, the net CG was implemented, I'd like to also point out that um, we are still lacking a lot of information here. <laughs> I mean, we don't, we don't have proof for it. We don't have evidence for overblocking, but we don't have evidence that it doesn't happen. Uh, actually, uh, social media platforms say that they um, decide uh, in 95% of the time on the basis of their own rules, of their community standards, get guidelines, whatever you call them. And we have no information whatsoever on how much these private rules are actually um, influenced by the law. So when we say, well, I would agree that um, the, the net CG, the implement or net CG has affected the, 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 the discussion. Um, there's a bigger discussion about um, harmful content, illegal content. There is also, I think, a bigger discussion about or more awareness about the power that platforms have over speech, which I think wasn't really, I mean, before it was all about, oh, there's so much hate speech online, they need to do more about it. But now it's, oh, actually, they also take down content that is not illegal at all. And the standards are maybe not really transparent. Um, so I think there are two, so the public discourse is, I think, a benefit to, um, to that. But if I, if I remember correctly, the, the, the French decision, for example, was mostly about the question of judicial review and that the, the measure itself to give over that power to pri private platforms was disproportionate. And I think that there is a big question of proportionality here. Um, and um, in a way, it brings us back to the question of what, I mean, how, to which extent should those private actors be bound to constitutional standards we have? So, um, yeah, so maybe, um, the, I mean, we had this evaluation of the net CG now, and I think that there is really not a lot of data we can rely on. Um, and also the transparency reports that they have to give it doesn't really give us the numbers to, to tell if the, the law is really effective or not. I think the, its biggest, the biggest uh, achievement is really that we have this big discussion and probably it also speeded up the, the, the initiative to, to amend the, the e-commerce directive to, that is the Digital Services Act. Mr. Gozi, maybe. <clears throat> I think Mr. Zimmerman also wanted to react on that, so. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I think, I mean, I, I, I have the luxury of being a politician. So um, no, but to, to, to be honest, I mean, I completely understand and, and already mentioned that it is a delicate uh, issue. Um, but the, 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 I mean, I, I, I've, I talked about this legislation quite a lot uh, worldwide. And uh, one of the, the main feedbacks I got from colleagues all from all around the world from democracies uh, is that it's great that Germany um, stood up against the platforms and made a stand and said, you need to do something. And because this is where we are coming from. We're coming from um, a, a gigantic development uh, and shift in the media market to the platforms. And I mean, one of the options still on the table is that we declare social media networks as media because if we um, would apply all the rules and regulations TV stations and uh, newspapers would have, um, this would be a completely different ball game. And um, so, so this is really, uh, I think, important uh, uh, to, to have in mind. And yes, it, it's not perfect, but um, I think it's, it's important also to have a look on, on what's happening on these platforms. And we, we came up to, to the decision as, as, as policymakers that we don't have a history um, for waiting uh, uh, over and over until um, we solved all these, um, all these issues. Because this is one of the beauties of digitization is that we have to come up with new solutions to new problems and not all 
um, all legislation we had on analog media, for example, can easily be transferred into into this uh, digital world. And um, yeah. Maybe um, actually your sentence that we don't, uh, we can't wait uh, leads me quite well to the European dimension. So maybe we can go into this and then Mr. Gozi, uh, if you allow, I would then uh, give the floor to you so we can, we still get to the European level before we uh, run out of time. Um, because we also wanted to discuss with you basically the comparison of those national approaches we talked about to the European level where we now see the Digital Services Act uh, being discussed. So uh, we already said the NetCG is now also kind of copied um, or taken as an inspiration in other countries. Um, so the question is, uh, do you think it's a good thing that the NetCG um, is a role model or maybe a blueprint also for other countries uh, in Europe? Might that be problematic when it comes to, Turkey's, uh, to countries like Turkey or Russia who maybe don't have a yeah, solid rule of law system like France or Germany do? And then do you think uh, we, need, uh, we need something on the European level or it's better to solve those things uh, at the national level? So what might be advantages or disadvantages um, of those both, le both levels? Because I think what is uh, often an argument is that it takes a lot more time on the European level to make a legislation in this area. But then again, um, also we see that all those national approaches lead to fragmentation in the EU single market because they all have similar but yet different laws and they obviously all address the same or similar companies uh, that have to deal with it so that this might also be a risk of national approaches and might be better to have harmonization at eu level so maybe this question in the round and then mr gozi if you want to please go first well i mean you have already answered uh, in the question you raised uh, rule, of law, rule of law is uh, a huge problem uh, within the council of Europe within the European Union uh, and it is clear that uh, this emerge also when you talk about digital services act uh, for the same reason why uh, we should have, have approach uh, a parallel approach you know, what is illegal offline should be legal online which is I would say the the motto of uh, what Ian, Zimmer, Ian Zimmerman rightly was rightly saying and this is true for rule of law so as we have a problem of, of rule of law within the union this problem we also be present uh, when we talk about uh, digital platform. That's the first, uh, the first answer, and this is why uh, we are very busy also on rule of law uh, at European level to tackle rule of law and to redress, to introduce new remedies uh, to ensure uh, the prevention of violation of rule of law and the sanction uh, of, bio of, of violation of rule of law. Second, uh, I mean, for me, the, the, the answer is very clear, and I was very clear also with my French colleagues, Yes, you need a European regulation. We are an, a, a single market. Uh, we are a single market, uh, and we want also to become a digital single market. And we are the first market in the world under, under many aspects. So it is clear that not only for reason of uh, avoiding fragmentation and ensuring legal certainty, but also for the reason of having a real impact and of uh, exercising a real legal power as a European bloc on the global scene, we have to move ahead with the European regulation. Uh, we, have, we have to move ahead even with uh, a, 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 having the ambition of legal extraterritoriality, of uh, a, 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 an extraterritorial dimension of our rules, because it is clear that uh, and we can do it as Italian, as French, as German, as, uh, uh, we can do it as European, as Italian, as French, as German, we cannot think to have uh, uh, rules that can, be, can have an extraterritorial, extraterritorial impact. But as a single market, when we say all the platforms who do their business in the single market, even if they are got their legal seats, see, uh, outside the European Union must comply with our rules, with our new rules, where you can be sure that you're going to have an impact. And this is the reason, second reason. So you've got first reason, a, 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 an exclusive, I would, I would say, legal reason, legal certainty, and avoid fragmentation, which is always ineffective, both from the legal point of view and from the business point of view. Second reason is a political ambition and the political need that we need to exploit the, uh, the possibility, the opportunity offered by the single market 
to have uh, to, to, to produce our legal effect even outside the single market if uh, the business is done from outside within the single market. So to protect uh, our values, to protect our citizens, to protect our consumers according to the field, huh? according to the field, I mean, be it e-commerce, be it uh, expression, expression, etc. And the third point, and then I, I will stop here, but if you want, I can come back on the third point if we will got the time. So the third point that it is clear we know that it's very difficult in the light of the excellent experience of the, of, uh, the Bundestag, in the light of the difficult experience of um, my friend uh, and colleague Leticia Via and the uh, uh, um, Conseil Constitutionnel. But it is clear that in the with the digital service sector, we cannot concentrate only on the illegal content. We must go beyond. We must also include the issue of harmful content. And uh, it is clear that for the illegal content, we can apply the e-commerce directive. Huh? There is uh, Article 14 of the e-commerce directive is still, for many aspects, uh, still valid. For uh, the, um, uh, for the um, harmful content, we have, to, uh, we have to work on the moderation. We have to work on the a, 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 a transparency and um, a supervision and the public independent supervision on how the moderation is done. You know that there are 90% of the action taken by the platform are through their self-moderation using the algorithm, but we need to be sure, sure that there is a supervision, otherwise you can really have problem on the, on the, on the freedom of expression. Huh? You can be excessive in the moderation. So we have to moderate the moderation if you want. Uh, and we, we have to work on the terms of services. Um, each platform offer terms of service. And working along this line, we can, uh, we can be uh, um, more effective also on the issue of the harmful content. I know it is, uh, um, so on one side, you can go along the line, the e-commerce directive, maybe an update is needed, but maybe not. On the other side, you have to work for the, especially for the largest platform around the idea of a duty of care and improving, improving also the, um, the issue of harmful, harmful content. This is what we have to do. It's going to be very difficult. There, is a, there are strong divisions, uh, different opinion within the parliament, within the council. But I think that this is what we have to try to do once the commission is going to table the legislative proposal on the 2nd of December. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was perfect because you actually also answered my next question, which would have been what you expect from the Digital Services Act. So uh, even better. Does anyone else want to go on this topic of the national and European level? Uh, well, one observation that I'd like to, to make is that um, and it relates to the EU level and, and, and the French level and actually the lessons we can learn from the French experience because uh, what happened to the Avia bill, it's very sad because the, we all agree that we need to uh, develop a set of uh, rules uh, to improve uh, how hate speech is, is dealt with uh, online. Uh, the French MPs, they, they spend a lot of time on it. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, it's been struck down. And I, I think that that's worth to just think about the lesson we should learn from this, because uh, it's, it's also something that can happen uh, at EU level. As you know, if, if we take example in other fields of and other areas of law, like data privacy, uh, we can see that European Commission decisions or directive, they, they are not safe uh, to be struck down by the European Court. So uh, I think that if we, what, what, what is crucial today, uh, and I think in, in France is, is really true, that we need to make sure that this regulation, they will be eff efficient and effective. And to be effective, they need to meet the standards that in France are... Uh, applied and required by the French Constitutional Court and at EU level, the standards that are required by the uh, European Court. And that's, that's something, and I'm, 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 I'm of the view that uh, 
uh, it, it is possible because it, it's possible to strike a balance and, and to make sure that all this mechanism, legislative and um, implementation of this legislative mechanism, uh, it can strike a balance that makes sure that all this remains uh, proportionate. Uh, and that's my point, actually. It, it's, it's so sad that we spend months, we spend years to develop legislation and that at the end of the day, there is this risk that the, the regulation is not efficient, is not effective, that today, I think the legislator, it just needs to, to, to keep in mind, I'm sure he, he does, but when, when I see what happened in France, I, I think that's something that needs to be kept in mind. Yes, definitely. Thank you. I mean, I, I agree on uh, on having a European solution to it. Um, um, from from a German perspective, we we always try to do anything we can to support uh, the the creation of the digital single market, and um, we are not interested in having uh, 20, 27 different uh, approaches. Um, Nevertheless, it's also it's also um, a, a difficult area because it's it's not only about a market. It's uh, it's about freedom of expression, and this is uh, going going much deeper. So um, so it's not it's not as easy as it seems. And um, talking about harmful content, I mean, I mean. On the German perspective, we're only talking about illegal content, and not uh, not and and that's also I saw in the questions uh, one 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 question about hate speech. Yeah, but uh, there is a lot of hate speech uh, which is completely legal, unfortunately, and um, up until now. There is no legislation in Germany, and I don't see uh, legislation coming um, that will block or remove uh, hate speech, which is covered by by German law. So, so this is uh, quite often this will be content which is removed under community standards, and and this comes to the next dilemma. I mean. I, I don't feel very comfortable that um, these decisions are made by private rules of US-based companies. I don't feel very comfortable about it. But at the end of the day, um, I'm, I'm rather um, relieved that right now, today, we have a certain balance that uh, content where we all think it shouldn't be online is removed by the platforms so so maybe f uh, only one example it it goes also into the terrorist content uh, debate so i mean we also had uh, tragic right wing motivated terrorist attacks in in germany and and we had one of these attacks in the city of halle uh, which was streamed uh, real time in into the internet and if you're looking into that video um, you have the first 30 minutes if they are reposted they are actually more or less covered by german law and they are now removed by the platforms because they say on the community standards we don't uh, want to see uh, this content so this this shows how complex the issue really is if i can uh, add something on this very important point can i yeah sure yeah, no, I mean, this is a, 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 key, a key point, huh? uh, but I mean, we have also uh, to try to advance in the debate uh, and uh, it is clear uh, when, it, when it comes to illegal content, uh, uh, the moderation, the any intervention of the platform on the legal content in principle leads to the removal of the content. So what is illegal must be removed uh, and we want uh, and this is what it happens, and we want it to happen more systematically with the common standard at the European level, okay? When it comes to uh, um, harm, uh, harmful content, uh, in, the, in, the, in the experience so far, uh, the you can use uh, other means uh, to manage this problem, to reduce the problem. Uh, to avoid the most the, the strongest uh, uh, most negative effect of it the, uh, uh, you can uh, you can have an impact on the virality you can have an impact on the visibility 
you can have, have an impact on the sharing of content. And why do I say this? Because I'm, I agree with the answer, Zimmerman. Yeah, really, we are today in a gray zone between, I mean, uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, overlap with the issue of freedom of expression. And this is why I think that on issue like harmful content or disinformation activities, because I mean, we haven't mentioned the disinformation activities, which is not, not only an issue, an internal issue of the EU. I mean, we have a democratic issue because we have uh, external interference in the European democratic processes. I mean, there is a report of the US Senate, which clearly say that there have been interference of Russian trolls linked to the Russian secret services on the presidential election and on Emmanuel Macron uh, mail account, on the debate on the uh, constitutional referendum in Italy, on the debate on the Brexit referendum. And this is not Sandro Godu saying, or in New Europe, or, or Marsha. This is, there is a, a, a report of the US, uh, US, uh, US Congress on this. So, I mean, uh, when, and we also must include in, in our analysis of the issue of disinformation, and on disinformation, you can, you can add on virality, you can add on sharing of content. It is clear that if we go beyond the, uh, um, unique uh, distinction between legal and illegal content. And we uh, take into account that the measures looking at the term of, of users, we need adequate transparency and we need more, I mean, a sort of public supervision uh, to protect exactly freedom of expression, to avoid abuses. It is very difficult, but you see there are uh, reason, reason of uh, internal law, of private law, of criminal law, of constitutional law, of foreign policy that push us today to try to advance on this, at least to try to advance on this. Mrs. Elt, maybe you want to comment on uh, harmful content regulation? Mm, well, I think that if, well, or at least I, I presume that um, if we talk about har online harms, this would also include disinformation, which indeed is a, is a big issue. And, um, exactly. And, and to me, that's only one of the, the issues that, um, that we're talking about. Um, and I mean, we have an example of a law um, targeting exactly that in France, uh, the integrity of elections, the integrity of information, um, or at least of the public debate three months uh, before, uh, before elections. So um, what I think, um, so first uh, on the European uh, perspective, I think that, um, um, I mean, the European Union is a union of uh, our community of, of rules and values. And I think indeed that the digital single market makes no exception to this. Um, and not only as a market, but I think that in the, the discussion around the DSA, we can really see the difference between um, the, e the debate around the e-commerce directive, where we were only thinking about um, websites hosting content as a service. And we're now much more talking about um, well, human rights uh, in the digital sphere. So I think there's already a big difference here in the debate. Um, then I think that what is expected of the DSA is to uh, become the sort of golden standard that would sort of like the GDPR have a spillover, a positive spillover effect uh, in, in the rest of the world, which, um, well, probably you could... Um, Criticize, but that could also be um, a welcome, um, welcomed uh, consequence, uh, considering that the European Union, especially with the hum um, European Court on Human Rights, has a big tradition of protecting freedom of expression, freedom of information, and um, and and the public debate in general. Now, all of this just comes back to the. I mean, it's just that all of these questions are very complicated. I mean. Deciding whether content is illegal or not is already very really complicated. Then, how do you what what is really harmful to whom? Um, I'm sure we all agree that um, um, a shooting uh, or uh, yeah, such as Christchurch um, or um, or Halle or um, that's very complicated. But there's also the question of live streaming. Indeed, how do you remove? How do you then put back up? Um, content that was streamed but um, but is actually not ha shouldn't have been banned. Now on how these questions this content is banned, it's banned 
if it's on if it relies on if the the decision is um, based on uh, national laws, it's only geo blocked in that in that area. And actually, the the global removal of, of content happens on the basis of community guidelines because then they are terms and services that can be applied all over the world by the platform. What I mean, the 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 advantage of that is that if we have more knowledge about how content is curated and how it is distributed, we can um, uh, draft along those lines certain procedural rules. I would not, I mean, I think that um, the point that Mr. Gozi raised uh, that there are other means than the removal of content, indeed, yes, but um, relying on shadow banning or uh, downgrading content just because it might somehow not be quite what you want to see. That's also very delicate. I would be very careful um, on banning content that is illegal and perhaps not even harmful, just because it might be sort of borderline. Um, so yeah, and 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 the the, the algorithmic um, um, sanctioning of content, such as just pushing it down in the newsfeed, giving it less visibility might be effective. But it's also something that people don't really see. So if you post something and your content is just sort of downgraded, you have very only very little means to act against that. And that's a problem too. So there's always two sides of that medal, I'd say. Thank you so much. After you actually all took away all my questions, you now also took away my conclusion about why this is so difficult. So that's perfect because we only have five minutes left. Uh, but I would really like to maybe uh, try to answer one or two of the questions from the audience. Uh, one which I found particularly interesting because we talked a lot about uh, so the standards of the platforms, the terms of services. Uh, one question from the audience um, was how we could maybe as society or also as politics influence those standards more, so basically control them more. Do you see any ideas or room on that? I would just say um, we haven't we haven't we just spoke about judicial review as as an obstacle to the loi via um, in the decision of the Conseil constitutionnel. Um, I think that um, courts, as those who decide over what we think our societal rules are, play an important ro uh, role here, and they haven't really decided on those matters yet. And I could imagine. Um, a decision uh, or more decisions. I mean, we have the decision of the Conseil Constitutionnel, for instance. There will be more decisions, and I think that we should also, um, yeah, think about that. Give judicial review also the chance to to maybe decide on these very difficult questions. Yeah, and I think um, I mean again, we um, legislation um, developed in in Europe over over hundreds of years in in, in some countries, and it's also case by case and um, I mean uh, in uh, talking about the single market uh, and talking about terms and conditions so in the in the usual business world um, we have uh, a, a lot of um, court rulings on terms of, and, and conditions uh, thinking about all the consumer protect protection issues there so um, it's um, I think it's it's completely plausible that we will see in the future much more rulings also on the community standards because basically they are terms and conditions so um, but this needs time and this is I mean this is always the and, and I'm repeating myself but I think this is the crucial point if you're doing uh, policy and uh, legislation in the digital world, you're always lagging behind. We're always lagging behind in any field, but in this field, um, it's it's even, even more because the development is so fast. And I mean, um, we're talking uh, now about the platforms of the here and now, but there will be new platforms in the future with completely new uh, problems. So, um, but nevertheless, this shows how important it is to start to develop um, um, rules and regulation, also to, um, to have problems with the courts because also the courts need to adapt. But this gives um, uh, um, uh, room, for, room to maneuver for the platforms, for the users and for the politicians. 
Yeah, thank you. We have so many more questions and I think we also have much more things to discuss. So I think we should definitely have a second uh, episode of this discussion. And I will, of course, also save all the questions so they are not lost. We can still uh, discuss them also with the speakers afterwards. But I think uh, also, Mr. Zimmermann, you have to leave at uh, six o'clock sharp. So that's just now. So I would like to thank you all for joining this debate. Again, we would have needed much more time, but I'm sure we will have another occasion to do this, thank you very much for discussing with us. For me, it was a very insightful debate, very fruitful, and mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to continuing very it nice. with you. Loïc, do you also want to say Yes, a few words of conclusion, and thank you very much for uh, participating in this webinar with uh, Bitcom and Tech in France, of course. Uh, in conclusion, we see that lawmaking is indeed very difficult in this uh, area. Um, maybe the maximalist approach, which was defended today, but is not always the has proved, proven to be the best way to solve uh, this, uh, this uh, problematic. And third, um, just to remind that uh, we, we have seen that in the last events in France that uh, the victims needs also reparation of prejudice, which is maybe more the, the role and the responsibility of the judicial authorities and, uh, and the courts. And they need also prevention of recidivism, which is also their responsibility less than the platforms, maybe. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for joining. Have a good Bye. evening. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye. Thank you. Very